Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of something some places at certain times. Now this episode I'm going to be doing alone again and we will be getting Sean back. We already have a an episode planned with uh, Drifting Home, the new Netflix animated movie and we will hopefully record that in the next few days but I want to start doing these more frequently pretty much any time I see a movie so I will be doing more alone but of course we will be getting Sean and maybe other guests as well as much as I can but I really just want to talk about movies because that's what I love so I'm gonna try to do this more frequently for most things that I watch even TV shows as well and this episode I'm going to talk about The Woman King And as always, I will start with a spoiler-free segment, and I will give you plenty of spoiler warnings before I get into any more details. And hopefully, I can keep these podcasts shorter, quicker, make them more concise. With Sean, we are trying to bring down the time that we take to do these things. So, just to make it, you know, easier to listen to. And, yeah, let's get to it. So, The Woman King came out a couple weeks ago. I saw it um, about two weeks ago. I saw the day it came out, which was, yeah, two weeks ago tomorrow as of recording this. And, I mean, first impression, I really, really like this movie. I think it's a great movie. I was very excited to see it. And when I did, I was very pleased. It's... um. It kind of lives up to the expectations from the trailer, in my opinion. And, yeah, I think it's great. So, I'll get into some of it. The acting, of course, Viola Davis plays the main character named Naniska. And they have also Nawi is the young character, played by Tusum Bedu. Um, I'm not sure if she's done many th- other things. Let me look her up. So she she has done a few things, um, nothing that I'm really familiar with. So this was the first time I saw this actress, and I thought she was great as well. All the acting in it was great. John Boyega plays King Gezo, um, Lashana Lynch playing Izogi. I think they all did a great job. The performances are great. The action sequences are fantastic. The action is really good. The fighting is good. For a group of warrior women, they really feel strong. They really feel like they can beat the crap out of all the men that they fight in this movie. And I think it's it's really well done. And I know the whole cast did do a lot of training for this. And it shows Viola Davis and all the other women look so strong and fit in this movie. And I think it's great. And, yeah, so... Let's move into some of the other stuff. Of course, I mentioned the action is great, and the music, I think, is very good, too. It's not a soundtrack that I would listen to just for the sake of listening to, but it fits the film, and it really enhances many of the moments in the movie very well. Now, I'd like to address some of the historical bits of it, because it is, of course, inspired by true stories, and it is based on a a real kingdom and a real group of female warriors, the Agoji, from the kingdom of Dahomey, which is in modern-day Benin. And I, of course, I studied history, so I have a degree in that, so I'm obviously very interested. And any time I see a movie, I think a lot of people are interested in the historical accuracy. So there's been some controversy that this movie is not very historically accurate and that's nothing new but Viola Davis kind of celebrates it in a way and says people should be happy with the maybe the changes we've made or this or that basically there's been a lot of praise for this movie and there's been some controversy that why are they praising it so much when it's inaccurate or they're addressing the inaccuracies but still saying it's a good thing And, you know, I don't really read the news, but this has been mentioned. My take is that a lot of historical movies are inaccurate. 
a lot of them are way more inaccurate than this and nobody really seems to care I don't know if it's because it's an all black woman cast that leads this movie that has kind of brought this controversy and it is it does mention the slave trade of course it takes place in the year 1823 1824 um you know early 1800s and it is there are some true events there was the Dahomey, the kingdom, was involved in the slave trade. And in this movie, you see some resistance to the slave trade. Whereas in real life, the Dahomey kingdom took part in the slave trade until the 1850s. I don't remember the exact year. But there, there are many articles you could look up to see how they discuss this. And I've read a few myself. And yeah, the, they were involved in the slave trade until the 1850s. And they ended more due to political pressure by the UK rather than their own want to get rid of it. Because, of course, it is a very, or it was a very um, the wealthy industry to get into. And, yeah, in this movie, they're portrayed more as, like, you know, liberators, abolitionists, when in reality that wasn't really the case. But... Then again, you know, it's, it's hard. I can see why they would make that change because you don't want to spoil what's really a, an incredible story about these women warriors from an African kingdom and, a, you know, culturally significant movie to have these black women led movie that's based on a true story of these warriors. So it, I feel like if they you know, just mentioned, oh yeah, they were slavers for another so long, then it would kind of take away from the good parts of the story that they're trying to get across. And yeah, there, there are so many movies that mess with the, the history, the facts so much. I mean, people love Braveheart. Even my Scottish friend loves Braveheart, even though it's <laughs> terribly inaccurate. One of the worst historical act one of the least historically accurate movies ever. Still a very good movie. But yeah, so that's the only thing I really have to say about that. Um, in general, I think it's a great movie. <clears throat> and yeah, I think it plays out great. Some other stuff with the his historical accuracies or inaccuracies. A lot of the characters like Naniska, Nawi, and King Gezo are based on real people. At least uh, King Gezo was the king during this time period. And this was a period where the Agogie, this group of the women warriors, were very strong and very big. King Gezo had kind of expanded it a bit. He was at like their the peak of their power, him and his son, who was the following king. And Nawi and Naniska are both names of actual Agogia warriors, but they came at different times and their stories are in this movie is kind of more fiction. As far as I'm aware, the personal stories between the main characters is kind of made up. And like I said, their involvement in the slave trade lasted longer than they portrayed in the movie, but they were... Um, subject to another kingdom that that was controlling them at the time they were giving tributes tributaries um and they did have the revolt for independence from that other african kingdom that is portrayed in this movie in that year so that bit is true and of course the actual group of warriors is real the kingdom is real so yeah, from a historical standpoint, no, it's not the most accurate, but it is, it, you know, <clears throat> it tells the general story of this group of people that we hear, at least in the West, you know, you don't really grow up hearing about this at all. I didn't know anything about it. So, yeah, I will give this a, a rating. I give this an 8 out of 10. This is a great, great movie. I highly recommend it. I think a lot of people should go see it. They could learn a lot about this kingdom, about this part of Africa, and the history of it, 
even if it's not completely accurate, but it is a, a great movie, and I think it lives up to the expectations that I had from watching the trailer. I was very excited to see this movie, and when I saw it, I thought it was great. So now I will mention some more details with spoilers. So, spoiler warning from here on out, if you haven't seen it, please go see it. Alright, so the opening scene, when they are fighting, they sneak up at night to this camp from another tribe, I don't remember the name, but it's the first opening scene of the movie, the first fight. I thought it was really good. It showed that they were strong, that they could really fight, that they were really good. And I really liked it. Like I said, it, it showed their strength. And I think that was a great way to open it up. The action was good. They looked badass doing it. And yeah, it was just a, a, a cool introduction. And then showing them in the kingdom after that, I think is cool. You see the kind of things that the kind of almost mythical uh, rumors that go around based on this group, the Agogie within their kingdom of Dahomey. And I think that's really cool. So what comes next is kind of getting into the, the story of Nawi, right? She gets given to the warriors to train um, because she doesn't want to get married and, you know, doesn't fall in line with the sort of patriarchal society. I think what this movie shows with that is that Yes, we have these strong women warriors, and they have privileges that no other kingdom in Africa, and indeed even in a lot of other continents, really had, especially at the time. <laughs> and But they're still part of a more or less patriarchal society where this girl is expected to marry whoever her father wants her to. And eventually her father has enough and gives her up, and that's how she becomes a warrior and like any good you know military training movie they they show her struggling getting better until she finds her place and I think it's all done really well I did read in one of the articles about the historical accuracies when they show the ceremony of them going through the final test their trial to become warriors them running through the thorn bushes them uh, fighting the the dummies, them climbing the obstacles. I did read an article which had an account, I believe it was from a French soldier or a merchant or something, who said, I thought they were crazy. I can't imagine anyone who would do that without thick boots or clothing to protect them. And they do it in minimal clothing, barefoot. And so it, it shows there is some accurate parts representing their actual training and the stuff that they would endure and go through to become these fearsome warriors. So I thought that was great. It was a great scene. It showed what they're capable of and the stuff that they go through. And after that, the the story between Naniska and Nawi. And Naniska finding out that Nawi is the daughter that she gave up. I thought that maybe that was a little bit too much like it was almost I mean not I wouldn't say predictable because I didn't hear about it throughout the beginning of the movie until it got to the point where Naniska uh, is talking to Amenza and they mention like what did you do with the child it's like I gave her up they don't mention it directly but it's easy to insinuate that what she means is she's afraid that Nawi is her child, and she never knew it. And then later when you find out that Nawi is her child with the bit of the shark tooth, I think that that's a little bit... Um, I kind of wish they left it more up to interpretation. Like, they, they shouldn't have shown that she put a bit of the shark tooth in her shoulder. They should have just had the scar. And in my opinion, I think it would have been cool if they didn't confirm it. So you could choose to think that if you want or not it doesn't really matter what would have mattered was Naniska's reaction to it and her beliefs and whether she treated Naoi as her daughter or not so yeah other than that like that that bit I thought was a bit you know you're getting a little too much fiction a little 
almost a kind of predictable or maybe overdone story with that. But, um, you know, otherwise, I think it was great. They could have just shown them bonding as a, you know, gaining that mother-daughter bond through their training. And it could have maybe had the same effect. I don't know. But the way it was, I just felt like that that little bit of the story, especially with the shark tooth, I felt was just kind of took me out of it just a little bit. But otherwise, I thought it was great. The battle at the end was great. <clears throat> the big battle on the open field of them sneaking up. Although, I would say they could have snuck up a little better. Like, how did nobody out there see them? They were in an open field and then just started walking towards them. Like, nobody was like, hey, look, there's all those warriors over there coming out of the trees. Mm, yeah. All right, but you know that's how they always do it with action movies, and then all the explosions come, and I thought it was really cool. Lots of good fighting, with the women warriors and the men warriors to show that you know this kingdom, they're not kind of fluffing it up to say it's just the women because the men were there too. But of course, this movie focuses on the Agodje, the the women. So, yeah, I thought it was great, and um, yeah, and then the last battle in the like the town center where the slaves were held and traded going to free the slaves or free Nawi the the Agogie who had been captured I thought it was great and um yeah it was good the final battle that you kind of expected from it all which was like a true battle this was the true story of them um getting out from the other tribes thumb so to speak to no longer be a tributary kingdom gaining their independence and that was the true part of the story at that year that is when it happened it's just the addition of getting rid of slavery at that time that was different and yeah but even even so like i thought that it was still great and it was a good way to end it, and they brought that personal story with Naniska and the guy from the other African kingdom who was like the the general in that army, giving it more of a personal touch. I thought that was good, and so she has a beef with this guy. She's out for vengeance with him, and yeah, I think it all worked out really well in the end, and the story was good. It was emotional. And if you stayed after the the like first half of the credits, you saw that uh, Amenza was doing sort of a ritual. Um, I guess, uh, I don't know if it's an, an offering of gifts like that they, they showed for the warriors who had died. I kind of wish they put that before the credits. They didn't need to put it mid-credits, um, but it was a, a nice thing to see. If you did stay for it, if you didn't, there was a little scene that you missed, but... Hopefully, if you're listening to this, you saw it. And, yeah, I think it was cool. I, I'm i not sure if that's, like, an accurate ceremony or anything they would have really done. I'd be interested to find out. But, yeah, I think it was, this movie in general did a great job showing these warriors as good as they can be. And, yeah, I, I thought it was great. It lived up to all my expectations. Once again, I give it an 8 out of 10. This uh, great movie. I highly recommend it. You should get your friends to watch it. It should still be in movie theaters when I upload this podcast. So hopefully anyone who gets the chance to see it takes that chance and enjoys it. So that's it for this episode. And thank you for listening. Please like and share and subscribe. This will be on Spotify and YouTube. Thank you for listening.